Well, here we are at the cornfield. I will put a picture of the imagery up on the screen and I will point out to where the non-fungicide areas were. Now, my brother is somewhere in this cornfield and he keeps yelling at me um, to follow his voice. But you know how hard it is to follow a voice when it's coming from that direction and <laughs> you can't see where you're going? Okay, I actually, I actually think I might be in the right spot. Are you in a high boy track? Am I supposed to say polo? Marco! Polo. So for those of you guys who do not know, Corteva sponsored this video and they sponsored a previous video where I use their approach stream of fungicide in a trial against a competitor. Now, it's not it's hard to see the difference between the competitor and Cort and the Approach Prima right now. However, uh, you can see a big difference between the untreated and the treated. So Corteva did not pay for their products. Um, they did not like micromanage uh, the trial. In fact, they told me to do the trial however I want. All, the, all they're doing is paying for the video. All right, so I found my brother. We're in here. To the right is the Approach Prima fungicide. To the left is the untreated. And now, Chris, you want to show them what you're explaining to me here? Yeah, so just uh, just looking through the canopy right now, and obviously there's going to be some drift overlap into the into this row, but this row is the last row of the Approach Prima. This is the last row of the Untreated. And I can just, there's a lot more green lower in the canopy on the Approach Prima, uh, Prima, however you want to say it. And then uh, here on the untreated there's just uh, I don't know if the camera can pick it up or not but there's just a little more uh, a little more brown and, and death in the lower canopy so let's just point out it's like right here see all these green leaves right here you come over here the one right next to it on the untreated side yep. is brown and kind of shriveled up yep. and it's like that for a long for all the way down here the other thing is this corn is about half milk line to two-third milk line and on the untreated side here we're already starting to see a little bit of a uh, ear droppage uh, there's one right here there's one right there on that plant. Uh, there really, I just, I don't, I guess there is one over there on that, but there isn't as much leaf droppage, or excuse me, uh, ear droppage. And when that ear drops, it is uh, that there's no more energy or sugars going into that ear. So it is, it is done producing. So uh, I guess the idea of fungicide is to keep that plant alive, uh, alive longer for about for another two or three days to hopefully pack a little more uh, sugars and starch into that ear, get five to 15 bushel better, um, better yields and better standability. So, so yeah. Yep, so one thing, we've been a little bit wetter this year. We had a hot, humid summer, so that kind of helps um, with the fungicide application. If you have a dry year, it doesn't do as much. So we're sitting, this is probably the most difference we've ever seen between the fungicide and non-treated stuff. Yeah, I mean, in the last two, three years, that's for surely in the last two, three years. Um, I mean, I think we have some unbelievable potential, yield potential here. Uh, a lot of these are 14 by 35 or 14 by 40 kernels. Um, I think that's uh, somewhere in the 230 to 40, 50 bushel ballpark. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it converts into bushels in the combine. Yep, and I will for sure show you guys um, the yield data and the trial data from that once we actually combine this field. But until then, yeah, no, this is looking absolutely incredible. It's it's really cool going through, you know, not just this field, but all the fields we applied fungicide in, going through and looking at the imagery maps, and you can see everywhere we did not spray fungicide, or for the most part. I'd say probably 80% of the of the untreated stuff we can see via imagery. Yeah, yep. That is some good looking corn. Yeah, almost every ear looks like that. Are you seeing, I mean, I know you've walked through corn, more corn fields than I have, just in general, are you seeing much for diseases in the untreated stuff or not really? Um, some varieties, yeah. Um, I've been seeing some northern corn leaf blight and maybe, okay. maybe if we find some today I can show you. Okay. And I've been seeing a gray leaf spot, and but no tar spot, thank goodness. We're a couple <laughs> counties away. <laughs> I was kind of afraid it was going to be this year, but I haven't, I haven't heard of any yet. I shouldn't say I haven't seen any because I haven't walked through much. But Yeah, I guess if, we'll, if we see some 
some disease will we'll point it out. Yeah, because like this stuff, you said that's just pollen rotting in the yeah in the leaves, yep. right? So the pollen falls from the anthers, the tassel, and then it yep just it, gets in there and rots. Yep, it molds. It's molding. So interesting. Okay, here's some northern corn leaf blight. Um, you could tell it's northern corn leaf blight by the way it looks. Or the way it is, the way it is. You can tell it's a nasty because of the way it is. No, it's uh, it's usually cigar shaped, um, and about three, three to, I don't know, eight inches in length. Um, that's definitely northern. This is also definitely northern. And just to be clear, we're talking about those brown spots on the leaves. Yeah, there, like yep. right. Northern corn leaf blight. Here's another one I dropped. And I believe, now someone can argue with me, I think this is a longer lesion here. And then right here. Um, so basically, uh, as this plant keeps progressing, this disease will probably spread and create, or make the plant die a lot quicker. So that's that's why we spray fungicide, I guess. Yep, and we're in the untreated stuff right now. So. Correct, correct, yep. So what's the difference between gray leaf spot and northern? So gray leaf spots is, uh, there's, I guess they're smaller, Mostly rectangular, intervenal uh, in the leaves. I think this is gray leaf spot. I think this is gray leaf spot here also. There's also one on this leaf here. I think that's gray leaf. So we say intervenal. Those, see these those, those little here? green veins be between them. Yeah, they don't move between the veins. I guess it's harder for them to move between. Okay, the veins. so I see that one's mostly between those two veins. Yep. That one, I don't. That one is cut off at a at a vein too, though. I don't know if that is, or that's just a leaf imperfection or something. Okay. But I, I believe this spot is and this spot, but don't. I'm not. A, I'm not a hundred percent sure, about ninety percent sure. So. Sometimes it's more of a plant health. You know, fungicide helps plant health also. So, just because we don't see diseases out there, it it it, alle it relieves stress throughout the growing season uh, compared to untreated. Okay. Hopefully you guys can hear that. I know, I know. It's been a little bit since I've been on YouTube. I took a little bit of a break when I started college. I hope that's okay with you guys. But we are back today. And, well, I'm going to give you a little update. Because not much has happened in the past couple weeks. We're kind of like in a lull where there's not much to do. Um, but we have done a couple things. First off. Uh, we got the grain cart connected to the 8335. Uh, we did that a couple days ago. Uh, we washed some equipment. Uh, the big sprayer back here. That got washed. Uh, the oil got changed in the 9570. I don't believe anything was really done. We don't really use 9530 during the fall. It's just kind of a backup. Uh, other than that, we washed the high boys too. But other than that, not much has happened. But today, we are going to wash this 8345RT. So this tractor actually got used a lot this past year. Uh, not only was it on the soybean planter, but it was also on the 60-foot row crop organic cultivator. And, well, it's, it's kind of dirty. And my brother and I, so my brother and I are actually part owners in this tractor. Um, so it's kind of special to us. It's like, uh, you know, it's kind of my first like big investment into the farm. So uh, we take a lot of pride in this tractor, so we're gonna take it today, we're gonna clean it up. We eventually wanna wax it, probably won't happen today because, well, today's kind of the last day of summer for us, so we have to go take our dock out too. It's actually Labor Day today, so I don't know when this is going up. But eventually we also want to repaint the rims and put some dirt flippers in here or track cleaners because the dirt has wore all the paint off of the inside of these um, rims right here. So I don't know if any of you guys have ever repainted track track rims before. We don't really want to take it all off. I'm wondering if you can just like sort of mask the center section up right here and just paint it the way it is. Um, so if you have any tips on that or anything, leave that down in the comments below because I'm genuinely, genuinely, genuinely interested. Well, while I'm waiting for my brother to get down, I guess I can move everything else that's in the way here. Mm -hmm. 